Hi everybody, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics and I'm really excited to give you guys a live demo of the PTZ Optics Studio Pro against the Sony EV10 DSLR camera. I've got them both set up here in our studio. This is the Sony EV10. This is a very popular DSLR camera that's often used for live streaming and we've got it set up via HDMI into a capture card. We also have the PTZ Optics Studio Pro here, side by side, both set up in 1080p at 30 frames a second with HDMI capture cards into my software. So let's go ahead and jump into this test footage, side by side comparison. All right, here we go with side by side test footage comparison of the PTZ Optics Studio Pro and the Sony EV10. Now I'm gonna hold up a color reproduction chart here so that we can show the colors side by side here and show the autofocus of coming back and forth between a subject that is close and then a subject that's a little further away. And so just to give you a little idea, these cameras are both being recorded into vMix. We are recording these in 1080p at 30 frames a second and we're recording in the exact same time. So the video is exactly you know, the same thing that you're seeing on the screen. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I want to zoom the PTZ Optics Studio Pro all the way out and then zoom it all the way in to give you an idea of the 12x optical zoom that the Studio Pro does have. So let's go ahead and do that. And then the Sony EV10 Ah, there we go. So that's fully zoomed in. That is a 12x optical zoom that comes with the Studio Pro. And then we're going to go ahead and zoom it all the way out to give you guys a feel for the Studio Pro. Um, and let's, yeah, let's go all the way out just to give an idea. Now we're going to do the same thing with the Sony EV10. This camera features interchangeable lenses. So there's lots of different lenses that you can use, but they're all pretty much manual is, is the, the most of them. So let's go ahead. We're going to zoom all the way out. I have someone helping me with this. We're going to zoom it all the way out. There we go. It's a manual lens. This is a, I'm going to, I'm going to put the notes to this lens. This is one of the stock lenses that we bought it with from B&H Photo. And then we'll go ahead and zoom it all the way in. This just gives you an idea of these two cameras in action. All right. So there's our test footage. Again, I'll hold this up to give you guys a little example of these two cameras, mainly set to auto. Um, there, are, there was some tuning that we did to get these two close, but uh, mainly in auto here. So you're seeing the autofocus and the color reproduction of these two cameras in a studio setting. All right, so I will let you guys be the judge of that test footage and let's talk a little bit about the differences of these two cameras. So I've got a little PowerPoint uh, that's going to go side by side over these two cameras. So let's take a look. Now, these are very two very different cameras, but they are often used for live streaming, and that's what we're going to kind of focus on here. The PTZ Optics Studio Pro is a 1080p camera that can go up to 60 frames a second, or of course 50 frames a second for our friends in Europe. Now, the Sony camera can go up to 4K at 30 frames a second. So it is a 4K camera. There's a big difference here. But um, you know, there's, some, there's some differences that we'll go over. The, these, both of these cameras actually have a Sony image sensor. So that's why when you look at the test footage, they actually look quite similar. Now, with that being said, the PTZ Optics Studio Pro has a 1 over 2.8 inch CMOS sensor. The Sony sensor is actually in millimeters. It's a 23.5 um, by 15.6 millimeter APS-C CMOS sensor. So that is a bigger sensor, and it will perform better in low light. Now, from a lens perspective, the PTZ Optics Studio Pro has a 12x optical zoom. So that is an integrated optical zoom. You don't have to purchase a separate lens. With the Sony EV10, you have an interchangeable lens. So it's very flexible if you need to do vlogging or photography and you need to, like to switch your lenses. The demo that we showed was an F8 
10 to 18 millimeter lens with the camera. So it has a little bit of zoom capabilities, not quite as much as the integrated 12X lens on the Studio Pro. Now from a video output perspective, this is a pretty significant difference here. We have HDMI, USB-C, and NDI on the Studio Pro. In fact, the Studio Pro has the ability to send out IP video on your network, uh, both locally for NDI, RTSP, and then it also can do direct streaming to YouTube and Facebook with RTMP, and then it also supports SRT, which is the Secure Reliable Transport Protocol. On the Sony camera, we have an HDMI output. We have a USB output, which is limited to 720p uh, video at 30 frames a second. Um, and then we can record directly to an SD card. So that is where the photographers, the vloggers who need to go mobile with the built-in battery, the SD card option is, is quite nice. Now the power options for the Studio Pro, it can be powered over Ethernet. So for a dedicated uh, installation or a studio or a setup where you're running a power over Ethernet network switch and you have multiple PoE devices, the Studio Pro really shines here. It can be powered over USB and it can be powered with the included power supply. With the Sony EV10, you can actually power the camera over USB and you can also use the included battery. Now, from an audio perspective, these, both of these cameras support a 3.5 millimeter audio output. The main difference being with the Studio Pro, that audio can be sent over HDMI, USB, and IP, meaning NDI or any IP connection over your network. The Sony EV10 can embed that audio over USB or the SD card. And I haven't tested HDMI, but I assume they can do audio over HDMI as well. So from a unique perspective, um, unique feature, the Studio Pro has an included light. So while it doesn't perform quite as good in low light as the larger sensor Sony EV10, it includes a light to accommodate that. Uh, it supports portrait mode. So uh, you can see right now, actually, the video I have is in portrait mode. Uh, there's a little uh, switch on the back to switch that. And it's quite interesting in a lot of different scenarios. And it, the Studio Pro also supports direct streaming to YouTube and Facebook. On the Sony EV10, it has a flip out touchscreen. It can do some really cool 120 frame per second video recording. Uh, and it also offers a lot of other features for photography and vlogging that the Studio Pro does not. Now, I want to go over all of these. Now, keep in mind, you know, this is, this is, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments about the video quality and the low light performance and the color reproduction. But essentially, you know, the Studio Pro is very much suitable for live streaming video conferencing, whether you're doing like Zoom meetings and things like that, and YouTube videos. The reason why I say that is because it does up to 1080p video, right? Perfect for video conferencing, Zoom meetings, YouTube videos, things like that. The Sony EV10 is a 4K camera, and it can do 4K really well with uh, recorded video and with uh, photography. It can do really high 24 megapixel pictures. But from a USB connectivity perspective, it can only do 1280 by 720. So it's really good for post-production, good for photography, good for vlogging. Now, from a low light perspective, the Sony EV10 is going to win. So if you have very low light scenarios, the Sony EV10 is probably the best camera. But the Studio Pro includes a light and is generally designed for places where you have controlled lighting. Um, you can see that in a controlled environment like our studio, you're going to get similar quality video from this camera. Now you saw the color reproduction. Uh, the Studio Pro obviously doesn't have the same color depth as a large sensor DSLR, but for your live streams that are being compressed, your video conferences, and your YouTube videos, you know this is going to be a very similar scenario with a much easier to use camera. Now the Sony EV10 has a larger sensor and a higher bit rate in a lot of what it does, so its color reproduction can be superior. From a bokeh perspective, a lot of our customers are asking about bokeh. With the interchangeable lenses and the ability to really dial in the bokeh on the Sony EV10, yes, you will get a better bokeh. On the Studio Pro, in, in various scenarios, if you provide enough space between the subject and the background and use that optical zoom, you are able to achieve bokeh. So if you know how to use it, if you're interested in setting that up for a production, you can get really nice bokeh. It also has a TOF, time of flight 
focus system that allows it to do that really quick focusing that you saw in that test footage. Now, something to keep in mind from an overheating perspective and a runtime perspective. The Studio Pro is designed to be connected and turned on 24-7, and it includes a five-year warranty. The Sony EV10 has multiple reports of having overheating when people are using the HDMI and the USB at the same time. There's some workarounds to have a dummy battery inside the Sony EV10, but in general, your battery life for the Sony EV10 is about two hours. So keep that in mind, and we'll look at some of the use cases side by side here. In summary, the Studio Pro is going to be your best, kind of most reliable situation for large, you know, live events and performances, where especially if it's going to be installed permanently, this Sony EV10 will be best for photography, blogging, and home live streams. So I wanted to take a look at just a couple situations here. If you're doing a studio recording like you like we are here at our studio here at PTZ Optics. We're doing live streams, we're doing podcasts, and we want the system to be able to be turned on and left on for long periods of time. So the Studio Pro is the best for long sessions, whether it's streaming or saving time for post-production. On the studio recordings with a interchangeable lens with the Sony EV10, it gives you a lot more freedom to change the lenses and do things. So, you know, you do have a two-hour battery life, but you have that flip-out touchscreen and you can kind of see what you're doing on that, that small. Uh, touch screen. If you're doing on location production, you know, you might want to have the Sony EV10 to put on a tripod and move around. But on the other hand, if you're doing a multi camera production with, let's say, OBS or vMix or some live streaming software, having the power over Ethernet and that NDI connectivity will probably make it a lot easier. Other options, such as podcast interviews and live events, you know, that IP video connectivity the remote controllability and the you know, lack of needing to worry about battery life and charging batteries, the Studio Pro really shines. On the Sony EV10 side, again, that interchangeable lens, the ability to move it and rotate it, because these are so different of cameras, you, know, you probably might need both for these different scenarios. Just to give you a little heads up on how we recorded this all, the test footage was recorded in vMix. Those videos were MP4s at 16 megabits per second. And that is how we did the test footage. Now, to end this, I want to show you guys a Studio Pro that we have in our studio, just to kind of give you one final kind of uh, little test footage here. I've got a Studio Pro right in front of me in our podcast studio. And this camera is actually set up to do the outro of this video. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you where I'm at. This is where I've been recording this session here. I've got a PTZ Optics Studio Pro right here, which is roughly 12 to 15 feet away from this chair. I'm going to cut to that shot and just show you the, the Studio Pro and how it's set up with this 12x optical zoom lens. I'm going to go ahead and have our producer remotely zoom in the optical zoom here so you can see that uh, integrated zoom remotely controlled. This is controlled over network connectivity. We're using vMix, but you can control these cameras with our smartphone apps, our PC, Mac, and Linux controllers. So let us know what you think about the Studio Pro versus the Sony EV10 and other DSLR cameras on the market. They're different cameras, but we wanted to do this comparison to show really that the quality of the new Studio Pro and the Sony image sensor is comparable in many scenarios for live streaming and video production. Let us know what you think. Give us a like. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in the next video.